Fox Business School, Stuart Varney turned into a triggered little snowflake once AOC decided to put out a snarky tweet that she quickly deleted, where she basically just laughs at the fact that the oil industry crashed. Um, now, I don't think that's necessarily too unreasonable, given that our tax dollars subsidize this industry that is killing our planet. Nonetheless, he feigned outraged and, you know, he claimed that she has no right to put out such a callous and disrespectful tweet at a time when so many workers are losing their jobs. Now, note the angle that he takes here. From the standpoint of a conservative capitalist, he's going to feign outrage at the fact that she's not concerned that people in this industry will lose their jobs. Ignore how he doesn't propose or approve of any of the solutions that would actually transition these workers into different clean green jobs, nonetheless. He's angry, he's gonna clutch his pearls, and uh, it's a little bit funny. Take a look. She tweeted and then deleted what she'd posted. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez had gleefully opined on the crash in oil and the sharp losses for stock prices. Quote, you absolutely love to see it. That's what she wrote. She's clearly happy to see CO2 emissions cut sharply. Got that. But if it takes 20 million Americans suddenly unemployed, businesses ruined, and thousands in lockdown misery, surely she should express a little less glee and a little more understanding of the catastrophe the virus has unleashed. Her now deleted tweet went on to say, now is the time for a worker-led mass investment in green infrastructure to save our planet. Cough. I don't know what the cough meant. Ah, never let a good crisis go to waste. AOC is pushing socialism again. Perhaps she thinks capitalism has failed. Well, she's wrong about that. It hasn't failed. The virus did this to us. And wild schemes to borrow trillions for the green revolution are just that. Wild schemes. Big picture. It's another attempt to politicize the pandemic and the president's response to it. Speaker Pelosi and candidate Joe Biden keep sniping away about Trump's delays costing lives. Congressman Adam Schiff will investigate right before the election. And AOC chimes in with a callous tweet. She absolutely loves to see the crash in oil and the wealth destruction in your 401k. Again, it's desperation based on unbridled contempt for our president. We will get through this, not by going to socialism and not by pulling down President Trump. We will get through it by getting back to work as quickly and as safely as possible. There is nothing more bizarre to me than a conservative capitalist claiming to care about workers. You don't care about workers because if you did, you wouldn't be a conservative capitalist. Now, what he says here, I, I think that this is actually good propaganda. Because there are a lot of Fox News hosts like Judge Jeanine Pirro, America's Karen, and Laura Ingram, who they kind of just wear the contempt for the working class on their sleeves, but you've got to fake it to make it a little bit more, right? Because a lot of people who tune into Fox News, they are working people. They're just brainwashed. So you've got to at least pay them lip service a little bit. And Stuart Varney is actually doing this here to his credit. But he's trying to basically claim that AOC is using this crisis for political game. Now, it's interesting that he says that, seeing that his own party is covertly trying to undermine Social Security to possibly privatize it, either fully or partially. We know what they want to do. On top of that, what did Trump just do? He banned immigration. So don't pretend as if the Republican Party is above using crises to their advantage. And I think that it's smart politics to actually use these types of crises to acknowledge how we have solutions that would make us way better off. Medicare for all, universal basic income, a jobs guarantee, these are things you can implement that will put every single American, financially speaking, better off. Make them better off. Um, but they don't, they don't go for any of these. Why? Because they are part of the capitalist cult and they're never going to leave that cult and the fact that you even would question capitalism is beyond the pale, man. So he says here, AOC is pushing socialism again. Perhaps she thinks capitalism has failed. Well, she's wrong, and it hasn't failed. The virus did this to us. Now, obviously, the virus did this to us. I'm not going to lie and say that capitalism caused this virus. I think that's, um, that's highly disingenuous. 
But one thing I will say is that this virus does expose all of the inherent flaws within our capitalistic system. Capitalism has no remedy for workers during a pandemic, whereas socialism does. The entire economic system that we have comes crashing down the second any sort of volatility occurs whatsoever. I mean, as soon as the stock market crashes, people lose their retirements. I mean, maybe 401ks shouldn't be in limbo because of the retirement. Maybe we need some sort of better solution that give people a little bit more financial security if they choose to retire. Maybe we shouldn't have a system where these private companies beg for socialism the minute people lose money to spend at their businesses. I mean, it's amazing to me that his entire worldview, the economic system that he worships, has been thoroughly discredited, especially now during this pandemic, and the best argument he basically has is, look, capitalism is still good. I swear to God, it's still good. Just keep being capitalists, guys. Keep supporting this economic system that's obviously working against you, that's against your own self-interest. Just, just trust capitalism. This is a cult. The fact that we haven't really even been able to question it until recently without getting harsh and swift pushback, it tells you how much of a cult this economic system is. Um, and he says that, you know, Democrats like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer have also been trying to politicize this crisis. They're attacking Donald Trump for not responding. But here's the thing. I criticize Democrats because I think that they've been incredibly ineffective at doing anything. But they're also right to criticize Donald Trump because he has been slow to respond. It's irrefutable that if he acted earlier, if he actually listened to the experts that gave him ample warning, we would be better off. You can't deny that. Furthermore, Donald Trump is doing nothing more than throwing crumbs to the peasants. $1,200? What is that going to do? That doesn't cover rent for most people. So, we are right to criticize the party that's in power currently, because if we don't, then uh, what's the point? I mean, that's part of democracy, right? First Amendment, right? So, even if you think that we're politicizing this issue it doesn't matter do better so democrats and the left don't have ammunition to criticize republicans but you see the thing about capitalism is it's not about building up the working class it's about building up the bourgeoisie that's what this is about they don't care about you they care about their donors they care about their advertisers which also happen to donate to the republican party on fox news yeah and he called aoc's tweet callous and implied that she was basically acting gleeful at the prospect of people losing their retirements. But the fact that you're supporting this 401k system in lieu of pensions, in and of itself, is a scandal. You're the one who's being callous. A 401k system is hugely inferior to pensions. And even that is insufficient. People in this country can't retire because of what capitalism has done to retirements. We privatize everything. They want to privatize Social Security. It's privatized this, privatized that. And then once these private companies who claim that they can actually handle everything uh, end up failing, then they call on big government at the minute it becomes uh, convenient for them. And it's really infuriating that these idiots see all this happening like Stuart Varney and they still claim that capitalism is the best system imaginable. Like, what a cult. This is embarrassing. Now, look, I am gleeful at the fact that the oil market has crashed, not because I want to see workers lose their jobs, but because I think it's time to save the planet and move away from fossil fuels. And unlike Republicans and Fox News, I actually believe there are policy pre prescriptions that we can implement that will not just save these jobs, save retirements, but save the planet. Now, what is that policy prescription when it comes to oil? We nationalize every American fossil fuel company. That way, we can kind of do a sort of controlled demolition, so to speak, of these industries. Transition away from fossil fuels. It's a more clean, renewable technology. Wind, solar, hydro. We no longer subsidize oil and gas, but we subsidize green, renewables. Like, why? If you're a capitalist, just assume we're all capitalists here. In a global competitive economy, why would you not want to be the leader in manufacturing green technology? That's going to give you 
the competitive advantage. So even by their own standards, the fact that they want to remain dependent on oil, like it flies in the face of reason, even from the standpoint of a capitalist, it makes no sense. Now, I want to read an article from uh, Chris Saltmarsh of Jacobin, who does make the case for nationalization of these fossil fuel companies. Because if we do this, this is how we set ourselves up to combat climate change. So that way, these private companies just are unrestrained to destroy the planet for personal profits. He argues in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, climate crisis and the oil price drop, our priorities as a society should be people and planet, not the profits of fossil capital. President Trump has already said his government government will buy oil for national reserves in response to the price drop, but we need a different kind of government intervention. This industry has had too many last chances. It does not deserve to be resuscitated again. Government should plan to nationalize it to avoid further short-term shocks and manage its decline in the medium term. The collapse in the price of oil is an opportune moment for governments committed to an energy transition to buy it up and set a sustainable course for the future. Oil stocks still haven't recovered from a slump at the end of March that took prices to new lows, and it's likely the latest crisis will push them lower still. With fossil fuel company shares just as volatile as oil prices, governments should get ready to take advantage of further slumps to buy up controlling shares in the companies. There is only so far investment in competitive renewable industries and regulation will go. If we are to wind down the fossil fuel industry and guarantee justice for affected workers and communities, we will have to bring the industry into public ownership to manage its contraction as part of a planned transition. Liberating the industry from its current drive toward profit is the only way to ensure it does not throw all its remaining resources at undermining a just transition and a Green New Deal. This strategy is the only way to ensure that energy is clean, treated as a public Public good and universally provided as a basic right by public companies. As we recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, we cannot go back to normal. There should be no place for the rogue oil industry in the future we build for ourselves. And that's exactly it. Now is not the time to fall back onto what's familiar. Now is the time to be bold and think outside of the box, not be worried and deterred by fear-mongering of socialism. Now is the time to take action. The oil industry is crashing. So what are we going to do? Continue to prop up this industry that's killing us? Or are we actually going to take control of this industry? That's a rhetorical question because uh, we know the answer already, right? But I mean, it doesn't... <laughs> what Stuart Varney is advocating for here is no change in the status quo. And what he is not telling you with that clip is that a lot of these jobs that are being lost... They're never going to come back. It's the same thing that Trump said when he promised to bring back coal. These jobs are never going to come back. So if you genuinely care about workers, then pretending to care is only going to get you so far. You actually have to have an alternative. A federal jobs program in an industry that will be a boon to our economy if we pursue it. Green industry. Not just green washing, but actual renewable technology. I mean, even from the standpoint, again, of a capitalist, a cult member who, like, drank the Kool-Aid, it would behoove you to invest in this to make us more competitive in the global market. Don't cede this ground to China. Don't give them the competitive advantage. But, I mean, it doesn't matter what terms you argue on. They're not true believers in their own ideology. If you were a pure capitalist, as you say you are, you wouldn't believe in bailing out industries. If you were a pure capitalist, as you say you are, you would believe in investments. You would believe in propping up other industries and not dying ones. If you were someone who actually believed in corporate socialism to an extent, as Stuart Varney does, because that's what his party advocates for. So, I mean, it's just, it's infuriating and it's really uh, frustrating that this goon, thinks that he can convince people that he actually cares as a conservative capitalist about workers and worker rights and what they're experiencing. But I mean, the sad part is that people do buy it. This this type of propaganda, I think, is effective. It lands. So that's why, as you know, members of the left, we've got to be extra vocal in calling it out and not be afraid to be bold. Call for nationalization of the oil and gas industry. That's what we need to do because that's what I think is going to help us be more successful in transitioning into a green economy. And I'll leave that there.
alpha male, not a beta male.